Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jeffrey Moss. I'm the founder and CEO of Parker Dewey. Really happy you can join us this afternoon for this webinar, Making the Most Out of Summer 2020. I'm joined today by my colleague, Kristen Schrader, who leads our university engagement team. And what we're going to talk about today are some of the best practices for how you can get the most out of this summer. I think we all know that the summer of 2020 is a little bit different than any of us would have expected, whether it means taking classes from home, having summer internships or full-time offers rescinded or anything else. What we're going to discuss today are ways to make the most or the best out of this difficult situation. Should you have questions along the way, please feel free to add them into the Q&A section of the chat uh, and we'll kick it off. So for today's agenda, we're going to couple of, uh, cover a couple of things. First, we're going to talk a little bit about micro internships and what they are and give you some tips for, suggest, uh, tips for success and best practices. Second, we're going to talk about strategies to find and create opportunities on your own. Third, we're going to talk about mentors and the value that they can provide, not just during this summer, but in general. And finally, we'll suggest some additional resources that you can access throughout the summer that will really help you launch your career most effectively. So what is a micro-internship? Micro-internships are short-term paid professional projects that are similar to those that you would be working on throughout the year. This is something that we pioneered about five years ago, not to be a replacement for a full-time role, not to be a replacement for a 10-week summer internship, not to be an alternative for companies providing you with full-time opportunities, but rather as a complement. Micro-internships provide a great way for you to demonstrate skills and explore career paths. So again, we define micro-internships very specifically. These are short-term paid professional assignments. Short-term meaning that you can work on them throughout the academic year. Each micro-internship requires between 5 and 40 hours of work, not per day, not per week, but in total, and they're due a few days to a few weeks out. Secondly, they're paid, as I said, and paid fairly. The companies we work with are not looking to take advantage of college students. They're not looking for cheap labor. They're not doing this as an alternative to sending something overseas. They're also 100% paid. So we do not believe in free internships or free work. So typical micro internships, you are paid for working on these projects, tends to shake out between $200 and $600 for each project. Um, and you'll see all of the details before you apply and we'll walk through that in a second. Again, they're professional. The assignments that you're working on are not drive a car, they're not fetch coffee or make copies. These are real professional assignments, similar to what you'll be doing in your first job upon graduation or in a summer internship. They're also applicable across every department, every role, every size company. So if you're interested in exploring opportunities with big companies, you can do it. If you're trying to learn more about the startup world, great opportunities to dip your toe in the water. If you're not sure if you want to roll in sales or marketing or tech or operations, you just don't know. And as a college student, it's really hard to know. This lets you try out all of these different areas and really hone in on where your interests are. So what are the benefits of micro internships? And we talk about the folks on our platform as career launchers. So we work with college students, all different matriculations. So whether you're a freshman, a senior, a graduate student, or even a recent college graduate, you can work on these projects. And again, we use the term career launchers. So what are the benefits? First of all, it provides you a way to explore different career paths. As I said, college students often don't know what industry they want to go into or what role. And that's true of all college students, but especially those who are pursuing majors that don't sound like job titles. As a philosophy major, I don't see many companies with the job title of philosopher. Not even Google has that. How can I figure out what opportunities I have upon graduation? Do I want to work in strategy or marketing or sales? Micro internships let you really explore that. You can learn about those different roles and also demonstrate your skills. Also, 
highlight or, or um, hone those skills that you're learning in the classroom in those areas that don't sound like job titles. So again, as a philosophy student, you know how to do research. You know how to craft an argument and communicate effectively. I clearly wasn't a philosophy student, but you as philosophy students know all of those skills. This gives you a way to demonstrate those in the real world and understand how they align to a variety of different career paths. And for those of you who are pursuing majors that do sound like job titles, if you're a marketing major, this really lets you hone in on marketing roles. And by the way, as a marketing major, do you want to work at a big company or small? Or if you like marketing, do you like marketing analytics versus content creation versus PR versus competitive analysis or marketing strategy? This really lets you explore all of those different areas. The second thing it does is it lets you enhance your skills. As we talked about, you learn so many skills in the classroom, both hard skills, how to use Excel, accounting rules, how to do a discounted cash flow, but you also learn core skills. Some people use the term soft skills, but we prefer the term core skills, things like problem solving, analytical thinking, communication. By working on these real professional assignments, you can enhance those skills that you've learned in the classroom as you're applying them in the real world. Again, it's known as experiential learning and it's something we're a big believer in. Third, it lets you prove yourself. I think we all know that what your GPA is, how you do on the test, what your major is, doesn't necessarily demonstrate your skills. It doesn't demonstrate your aptitude. It doesn't prove whether or not you're the right fit for a role. By working on these micro internships, we've essentially leveled the playing field. We've given you a way to demonstrate your skills to employers, irrespective of what your academic pedigree is, irrespective of your family connections, irrespective of your network. You have the opportunity to work on these real professional assignments to demonstrate yourselves and prove yourself to prospective employers, build your resume, and build your LinkedIn profile as you're working on these assignments. You also have the opportunity to build your network. This is really, really important, and it's not just with the companies you're working with on these micro internships, but it's with everyone else. And what I mean by that is as you're working on a micro internship, it gives you a great opportunity to reach out to an alum from your school. So I went to Indiana. I had a student email me and say, hey, Jeffrey, I'm working on a micro internship from McGraw-Hill. I saw you have some background in education. Can I get your insights into a given trend or can I get your feedback as I'm working on that project? It creates an authentic connection between you and the alum or you and the faculty member or you and some other contact that you have as you're working on these micro internships. And then you are also building your network with the client company, the company you're working on the projects for. And again, whether or not you want a long-term role with that organization, it gives you a way to build your network because those professionals will likely be good references for you in the future or may know of other opportunities that are available for you. And finally, you get paid. As I said, every micro internship is paid and paid fairly. So not only are you getting all of these other benefits, you're also generating a few hundred bucks. Micro internships are applicable, as I said, across every industry in every department. Just to give you some real examples, micro internships in sales could be lead generation or prospect research. In marketing, things like content creation or development of a social media calendar or doing a competitive analysis. In operations, we've seen projects around demand forecasting. In HR, things like job description reviews. And what's great is every one of these micro internships has been crafted specifically so that a career launcher can be successful. The vast, vast, vast majority of micro internships on our platform don't require any professional experience and are doable irrespective of what your major is. The companies want your perspective on this. They're looking for a fresh set of eyes. They're looking for someone that is inherently motivated to work on these assignments. So what's great is as you're working on these micro internships, not only are you able to demonstrate your skills in the specific areas in which the micro internship is being offered. So in finance, you certainly can demonstrate your, your skills in financial analysis. But what you're also doing is you're demonstrating other core skills. So even a quote unquote grunt work project like data cleansing, do you know what? When you're working on that project, it's a great way to show your attention to detail. 
which is one of the core skills employers look for. It's a great way to show your problem solving. It's a great way to demonstrate empathy. Do you understand why the client is asking for that project done? And are you able to do it in a way that exceeds their expectations? So how do you get started on all of this? Well, we try to make it pretty easy. And I'll let my colleague Kristen walk through the process. Great. Well, we are a completely standalone process and platform. So when you sign up, it's completely up to you what information you want to put into your profile. Uh, we're not going to be something where you need to pull information from your LinkedIn or from Handshake or Simplicity or whatever other career services platform that your school might be using. It's up to you what you want to include. And one thing to keep in mind is that this is what the employers who are using the, this platform are seeing. So you want to take this very, very seriously. So to that end, having a really, really great profile is directly relevant to increasing your chances of success with obtaining these micro-internship opportunities. So to get started, first, of course, your name, your email address. Uh, you can use your student email, uh, which I would recommend for those of you who are current students who are act uh, actively checking that email address. Those of you who graduated, though, or if you don't actively check your student email address, use whatever email that you're going to be using because that is the primary way that not only we as in Parker Dewey would let you know that you were selected for a project, but also the uh, companies who might want to reach out to you uh, after you've applied to a project to, say, set up an interview. That's how they're going to reach out to you. From there, you'll want to then upload a photo. We definitely recommend that. It's not required, but we definitely recommend that just so the young company can and have a chance to get to know who you are. Um, and similarly, you have the chance to then uh, upload information about your experiences, your education, upload your resume, and so on. Now, experiences. This is a very broad category, and it's up to you to define it however you'd like, uh, including things like part-time jobs, other internships that you've already had, extracurricular student organizations, athletics, any and all of these things can and should be included in your experience section so that the employer can really get a, ch a chance to know who you are, what you've done, and the value added perspectives that you'll be able to offer to the project. Same thing with your education section. This section is critical, and you'll see more about that in a few moments when we show you the company's side of, of how this works. But definitely list what school you attend, what school that, uh, if you're currently attending, definitely list that school. If you've already graduated, list the name of the school that you've already completed your degree from. Maybe you're in graduate school. We'll list wherever you received your undergrad degree, as well as where you're currently attending if they're separate institutions. List your graduation date, your anticipated graduation date and then list your majors. Those are really, really basic but important things that a company wants to know about an individual and leaving them out just makes it look like you just really didn't put in the time and that maybe you just don't really care. If you don't care, why would they want to pick you uh, for the project? Now, as for your resume, you have an opportunity to list just one version of your resume, so you can always update it as you wish, but definitely choose a resume that is nice and detailed and one that could showcase your experiences in a variety of different areas based on the types of projects that you might be interested in pursuing as well. You also have a section called Documents, which is a broadly defined category where you can then upload samples of your work. You can upload uh, artifacts, things that showcase you doing similar types of work, maybe articles you've written, Excel spreadsheets you put together, presentations you've uh, uh, applied, uh, created for classes or for internships, et cetera. But it really gives an employer a chance to see the quality of the work that you've done. And once again, just shows that you've put an extra bit of time into the, uh, the opportunity and to, that you're very, very serious about, uh, about taking this opportunity uh, one step further. So, and as you'll see in this next bit, Definitely include that profile picture, uh, a professional photo of you, not you with a significant other, you with your favorite pet, but one that shows you in a professional light. Why is that important? Well, let's take a look at things from the company's perspective, because this is how they get to choose one student over another. Pretty straightforward. They only see those students who applied to their project. So we're not a resume database where students or where companies can go in and search based on XYZ criteria and find students who fit what they're looking for. No, it's completely up to you to indicate that you're interested in their project based on just simply applying for that project. And then they can see then your photo if you chose to upload one. They can see your your name, and then they can see what school and what your major is and so on. And so you can see from these examples in that left side screenshot how important it really is 
that you indicate and fill out this, those sections of your profile. Because if you look at that last example of the student at the bottom, this individual did not include their school, did not include their major, and it's basically a blank slate and one that a company would probably not take that seriously because you know they clearly didn't take a lot of uh, put a lot of effort into their their profile. Why would a company want to read more about that student? Now, what you see on the right side is what the company sees when they click details. And so that is where they see the answers that you provide when you're applying for their projects. Now, the application process, and also the interview essentially, is a matter of you filling out one or more short answer questions. The first question that is for every single project is why do you think you'd be a good fit for this position? So this is where you want to clearly articulate what experiences that you have that are relevant. Mention that you did something similar in a class. Mention that you've done it in similarly, a similar type of project in a in previous internship. And while you're at it, upload an example of you doing that project and whatever you completed in that internship uh, or that uh, in your document section of your profile so that the company can really, really see that you have put your best foot forward with this particular application. Uh, because if you compare these two screens, you've got one student who clearly articulated why they're a good fit, and another who simply said, well, I'm great with numbers, I compare things, I don't think I'd have much trouble. Those aren't strong applications, especially now. Everything going on right now in the world with COVID-19, lots and lots of students who are looking for opportunities, particularly opportunities that are remote, and paid, they're rare right now, unfortunately. And we wish that that wasn't the world that it is right now, but it is what it is. And so that means that you, in order to put yourself in the best frame possible, the best light possible, you need to put some extra effort into everything that you're applying for right now, even something as short term as a micro internship. So making sure that you have some detailed responses. The second question in this particular example says, please describe your accounting experiences. Well, saying, yeah, I don't have any accounting experience, you may want to rethink even whether you want to take the time to apply for that particular project, because clearly this project is about accounting. They want somebody who has some experience, uh, and they're going to find students that have experience who are going to be applying for this project. So take all of that very, very seriously. Because you can see from these two screenshots, those short answer questions that you're submitting in response to the uh, company uh, applying for the, the project those are front and center. That is what the employer sees. Yes, they can click on the left side link and see your uh, resume, but that takes extra time and effort on their part. So really those short answer questions are going to get you through the door even more so than your resume with these particular opportunities. So that being said, after you apply, how are you going to know if you're selected? Well, it's going to be via whatever email address that you provided when you signed up for the platform. And you'll get an email from parkerdewey.com saying, congratulations, you've been selected for XYZ project. Here's the name of the company that you'll be doing the project for, and here is the name of the point of contact at that company. And then it's going to be up to you to reach out to that company and go ahead and uh, let them know that uh, how best to, to get started with the project. It might be through some sort of a Zoom conversation. It might be a phone call. It might just be via email. It's going to be up to you and that organization how you want to move forward and get the project up and running. And it will vary depending on the project. And really how you work with the company from there, that is going to vary as well. Now, where do we fit in? You know, We as in the Parker Dewey team, well, we're here for you. We're also here for the company. We want to make sure that your project is successful. And both of you will have our contact information so that you can reach out to us if need be. But frankly, we don't really want to get in the way of whatever needs to happen to get the project done. So we'll be there to support you. But for the most part, it's going to be up to you and the company to work together to make sure that the project gets done. And so really, it's going to be up to you to make sure that if you have questions, let them know, let them reach out to the company, ask for clarification so that uh, you can make sure that the project stays on track. Now, what if you are in this intermediate stage, you applied, now what happens? Well, you can always see what projects that are currently open by going to the opportunity section of the platform. And when you, and we'll have a screenshot for this in just a moment, but uh, when you look under the applied section and see those projects listed there, those are the projects that, are, that you're still under consideration. Uh, now, if you've been selected for projects, those will be under hired, and you'll see, again, where your status is under the uh, different sections of your dashboard once uh, you've applied for projects. Now, also know that if you're selected for a project, 
Parker Dewey is going to send you a couple of other emails, specifically some kickoff materials. Because while you're completing the project, you are going to be an independent contractor of Parker Dewey. And so as such, it's up to us in that we are, we'll be handling payroll, we'll be handling the administration of all this, all those HR documents that you fill out when you are hired for a part-time or full-time job. Those are all things that you'll be doing in this case with us at Parker Dewey. So accounting forms, terms of use, and other documents you'll receive from us. We'll also send you some best practices and tips to help you keep the project on track as well. And when do you get paid? When the project is completed, you'll receive the compensation via whatever pay, direct deposit payroll that you indicated to us when you first filled out those accounting documents at the beginning of the project. You'll be paid via that, um, and you'll be paid again by Parker Dewey. So looking at, uh, again, this where you can check your status in a little bit greater detail. This is, again, from the student's perspective. So under that applied section that you see on that left side screenshot, if you've applied for projects and they are still listed there, then know that you are still under consideration. It will go away when that project has been filled. So as long as it's still listed there, then you're still under consideration and you still might hear some positive news from that organization that they might have chosen you. Even if the start date has passed, if you're still listed as under applied, you're still under consideration. Companies' plans change all the time, so it is completely fine if a start date has passed. Uh, know that you do. don't lose any sleep yet because uh, you still might uh, be considered um, and be chosen for that particular project. Similarly, when your project is completed, uh, under the completed section of the dashboard, you'll be able to see the feedback that you've received from that organization if they provided it for you. And so they'll be, they'll be given an opportunity to indicate their level of satisfaction with your performance, both in uh, qualitative and quantitative metrics. So you can then see all of that. And uh, feel free to, if they gave you some rave reviews, you can always reach back out to that organization, continue the conversation. I'd certainly recommend that. Her, who knows? Perhaps this could turn into a longer term opportunity. It could turn into something where they could become a mentor or perhaps even a reference for you later down on the, on the road. But it's up to you to keep that relationship going. And so some suggestions for success if you're selected for a project, do a great job. Keep in mind, this is a professional opportunity with a real organization that has a business need and they've picked you. So doing the job just somewhat okay, that's not sufficient. This is more important than perhaps even a class and that you're not gonna get a grade for it that's an A and, and call it a day. This could turn into something that could be an extremely value-added opportunity that you can showcase to a employer for a future job, for a future internship. They could turn into to who knows what to, uh, and down the line. So check, recheck, and check your work again. Get some other feedback. This is a great opportunity to go back to a professor that you had a great relationship with or a mentor that uh, you're already working with. See if they would be willing to take a couple minutes to give you some feedback on the quality of your work as well. So this is really, really a real world experience. Now also understand that you know, if something happens, be very transparent in articulating what's going on to that company point of contact. Let them know, let us know at Parker Dewey so that if we need to get involved, we can do so as well. If issues arrive, do not wait until the last minute. Loop us in so that we can uh, modify course accordingly and, and uh, take it from there. When it comes to communication, keep in mind this is a professional work environment. So, you know, using slang or other sort of shortcut terminology, that's not appropriate. So edit your emails or any other communications that you send to these uh, hiring managers, knowing particularly in the case of an email, that's a permanent record of your level of professionalism, and you want to treat it as, as such. And ask questions. It's completely fine. You're a student. They recognize that. And so make sure that you let them know if whatever questions that you have. Um, but keep in mind, too, if it's something that you could do a little research to find the answer yourself, you should do that. Make sure that you're not taking up too much of these high, busy hiring managers or these busy companies' time. That's why they're posting the micro-internship in the first place. They already have too much work to do. So you want to add more work by just asking questions where if you did a bit of digging, you could have found the answer yourself. And also just you know keep in mind that the purpose of the project, whatever it is, make sure you understand that from the get-go. It's completely okay to ask, okay, why do you need this? What's the target audience? So that you can make sure that your deliverable is appropriately addressing those, those needs that they have. And after the project, 
This is your time to shine and articulate what you did and put that on your resume, put it on your LinkedIn profile. This is all value added experience. Now, keep in mind though, you wanna make sure you ask the company's permission to list it on your profile uh, and get their permission first. That's going to be one of those documents that you sign when you're selected for a project. It's a non-disclosure agreement that states that you'll ask their permission because sometimes the projects that you're working on are a bit more sensitive in nature. So the best approach is to ask the company's permission. Hey, can I use your name on my resume? And if they say yes, they'll pay, go for it. But if they say no, not a problem. You can still list the experience on your resume. In this case, though, you'll just want to clearly do, uh, indicate that it was for a mid-sized uh, organization in the XYZ industry. And do not name the specific company, but you can go ahead and indicate a little bit about the organization without mentioning their name. And then spend some time reflecting. What did you learn? What did you like? What did you not like? You might adjust your plans accordingly. And as mentioned already, keep in touch, because you never know when this might turn into a longer term opportunity, like the example of the uh, student, uh, now uh, uh, alumnus, who, uh, Noel, uh, who has gone from doing micro internships, leveraging those experiences into a really, really awesome full time opportunity. And uh, this was an individual who was just not having a whole lot of success with finding traditional internships via the traditional hiring way but he did some micro internships and is now doing very well. And success stories like that uh, abound even in the current hiring environment and economic environment that we're in. So just a few other FAQs. Uh, first of all, cost. Platform is free, free for you to use. All projects are paid. There's not gonna be any sort of hidden gotcha later on where we're charging students. No, that's not what we're all about. We're a mission-driven organization. And so feel free to use this regardless of if your university is partnered with us. International students, yes, you can complete micro internships if you are eligible for a CPT, a work visa, or OPT. But definitely make sure you check with your university's International Student Services office to confirm your eligibility. That's out of protection for you, so do make sure that you do that uh, before even applying for these different opportunities. And if you've already graduated, yes, if you're still in the stage of trying to launch your career, we are here for you too. That's a big reason why this platform has been developed. So certainly you can and, uh, and should still consider yourself eligible for these projects. Now, how many projects are typically on the platform? Well, it varies. We're not like a traditional job board that you might find that your school is already using. So there's not gonna be thousands upon thousands of projects at any given time. Usually there's somewhere between 25 and 50. It does vary, but just know that projects tend to be filled very, very quickly. Usually within a few days, sometimes within a few hours. So know that the best success tip that we can provide in terms of, of uh, applying for these projects is to check the platform frequently. And if you see something that is of interest, apply right away. Now, what does frequently mean? The most successful students tend to get into the habit of going onto the platform every day or two, seeing what's there, and then don't wait around. If you see a project that interests you, pull together your application and apply right away. Because if you wait three or four hours, it may not be there anymore. And also know that you might see one opportunity, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the company is only choosing one student. They can and do hire multiple students all the time. And what does that mean if there's multiple students? Well, you probably won't even know that multiple students are being selected for the project because this doesn't become group work with random strangers. No, you'll still work completely independently on the project. You'll still be paid the full amount but in the case of uh, an article about blog writing, well, in this case, the company might have six students write a blog article, and now the company doesn't have to worry about writing a blog for six months, which sounds pretty appealing to me since I do a fair amount of that. Now, uh, keep in mind, too, that uh, the start date has already passed. The company's plans may have changed. Still consider applying if the project interests you. So I think that covers it. Jeffrey, I'm going to let you have a chance to talk now. Yeah, no, thanks, Kristen, and I think that's really important is, um, again, you might see 25 or 50 opportunities if you log in today that may actually represent 2,500 or 5,000 unique opportunities. Companies are sometimes taking 5, 10, 20, 100 different students to work on each micro-internship, especially as they're using it to identify which students they want to recruit when they are on campus. Um, and again, you might log in today and see completely different projects, 25 or 50 completely different projects than you would have if you logged in last week. So, so checking in frequently is important. Um, hey, Jeffrey, I'm going to interrupt and 
just a moment. Yeah, sound quality and the microphone seems really grainy, so I'm not sure if we can adjust okay, that. Okay, now. I can hear you. It's just very grainy, so I didn't want to make sure that students don't miss out on uh, what you, you're saying. Is this better? It just sounds like you've got a big frog in your throat. <laughs> is this better? Much better. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, hopefully we'll be able to edit this out, but if not, you uh, all the students know this is live. Um, yeah, so um, again, first of all, the projects could represent huge numbers of projects. You may not realize it. Um, so one of the things I alluded to before was the importance of understanding the crosswalks from college to career. This is something we spend a lot of time on and something you should really think about before applying to each project, um, but also when you're done. And what I mean by that is even if you're not a marketing major and you see a marketing project, you should still apply. Again, remember that those core skills that are, you've developed in the classroom, irrespective of major, are the ones the companies most value. So as a philosophy student, you might see a marketing project that wants you to do a competitive analysis. Well, as a philosophy student, you know how to do research. You know how to analyze different, um, different arguments and craft an effective argument and communicate it effectively. Those are all the skills required for a marketing project. You should apply because, again, it's a great way to demonstrate those skills and also explore those career paths. And then when you're done with the project, think about those core skills that you were able to demonstrate as you worked on it. So we talked a little bit about how to be successful on micro internships. One of the things we're seeing a lot of, especially this year, is college students creating their own opportunities. They're actually reaching out to companies to develop their own micro internships because they are still a new concept. Even though we've been doing this for five years and more and more companies are recognizing the value of micro internships in their campus recruiting efforts, it's still not 100%. And for some managers, they may not have worked with a college student on a professional project before. You have the opportunity to create your own projects. It's something we're happy to help, or help you work with. So if there's a certain company that you're dying to get in the door with, a certain role that looks perfect, a certain alumni that you're trying to engage, reaching out to them and offering to help them on a specific project that they may have on their plate is a great way to build that relationship and a great way of taking advantage of the current situation this summer. So if your internship was canceled, reach out to that company. Those managers still have work that needs to get done. And while they may not be able to hire you for 40 hours a week over 10 weeks, are there opportunities for you to work on discrete projects for them? Are there companies that may not have been able to fill all of their internship positions or may have needs that are emerging now, or as I said before, alumni that are so busy they could use the extra set of hands from a highly motivated college student? We are seeing this over and over and over again, especially right now, especially as busy professionals are still adjusting to remote work still adjusting to not being in the office, finding themselves inundated with too many things on their plate and not enough hours. And in fact, we'll give you, or we have an email template you can use to do that kind of outreach. We'll make it available uh, again in the slides after the presentation so you can click through. Um, you can do these micro internships on your own. Of course, if you want to push them through Parker Dewey, we're more than happy to work with you. That way all of the accounting and back office gets handled. Um, again, 100% up to you. Another thing we talked about was the value of mentors. This is something that we just think is vital. There's so much discussion around mentoring, and I think everyone appreciates the value of a mentor, but all too often mentoring happens artificially. You're assigned a mentor. You're given someone who you should talk to, and the conversation feels a little superficial, or you're reaching out to an alum from your school and you're saying, hey, let's talk about the basketball team, or why did you pick a certain major? Tell me about a day in your life. Uh, those conversations are a little bit, I, I don't know, awkward. Um, I can tell you as an alum, they're not my favorite conversations to have with students. I love supporting the students. I love helping. I love talking with them. But the 10th conversation about the Indiana basketball team, and if they're going to make the tournament this year, isn't necessarily my favorite conversation to have. 
over and over. And why I decided to be a given major 20 something years ago, it's not really relevant for the student. And by the way, we know the students don't enjoy those conversations either. One of the things that we're finding is these project-based experiences become a really great way to build that relationship. As I mentioned before, if you're reaching out to an alum from your school on, I saw you have experience in education, I'm working on an education project, or I'm working on a project on behalf of an investment bank, can I pick your brain on how you would think about setting up a cost of capital? Or I just wrote this blog article for a CPG company, I know you have experience at Pepsi, I'd love to get your insights. Alumni love having those conversations. It's a great way to build those mentor-mentee relationships in a much more authentic way. So again, reach out to those organizations, whether it's to help you create micro-internships or whether it's while you're working on these projects to provide support. And Kristen will share some additional resources that are also available. Yeah, we'll be sending out the slide deck so you can click on these hyperlinks uh, at a later time. But uh, we've got an article on a number of different resources that we wrote. Uh, micro internships are one of them, but they're one of many of ideas on what you can do if your summer internship was canceled. Keep in mind that you've got a lot of time on your hands. So this is a really good time not only to upskill, so maybe learn something new and that might enhance your uh, abilities to obtain some other opportunity in the future, but also a chance to volunteer, to conduct maybe some informational interviews and other conversations with mentors or others that uh, might help you decide whether or not some career path or another uh, it might be a good fit for you. We also uh, have a uh, colleague of ours that uh, you know, has written a number of different books and has a lot of really great advice, um, videos and so on, that you can check out. So to Harlan Cohen, I definitely uh, recommend a lot of good stuff on how to be successful in college and beyond. Uh, and then Way Up, they have put together a phenomenal list of, of uh, individuals that are doing a lunch and learn, or if you're on the Pacific Coast like me, uh, then you might be more breakfast and learn, but a chance for you to sit down and hear from CEOs, chief technology officers uh, from companies large and small, but companies that most of us have heard of, uh, that uh, you can learn straight from the source about what it takes to be successful as an intern, a recent grad, or somewhere in between that journey. I also want to highlight a couple of others, uh, such as the online career fair, where, as I mentioned already, the value of, of having a conversation, 20-minute call with these industry professionals can be a fantastic use of time this summer, where you can then have a conversation with a company that maybe you have heard so many great things about. So what is it like to work for Pepsi, for Amazon, for LinkedIn, or whomever, and see what it, uh, that typical journey was, how did they get to where they are, how do they crack that code of they, uh, their college recruitment process or whatever the case may be. But there might be some organizations with companies that you haven't heard of that have some phenomenal opportunities and you can spend those 20 minutes learning about their career journey and maybe that might be a better fit for you uh, longer term. So definitely recommend these online career fair conversations. They're free and you can do them remotely from wherever you are. And then lastly, we've got a great resource with Student Playbook. They have put together another phenomenal array of resources on how to be successful in college for uh, if you're in your first year, if you're getting ready to graduate, and again, any step along the journey so that you can really maximize the investment that you're making, not only financially and just going to college, but the investment that you're making in terms of time and yourself, your own professional development, so that you can uh, figure out how to maximize that college experience to end where you truly want to be uh, upon graduation. So to that end, uh, Jeffrey, do you want to close us out with these next steps? Sure. Um, a, a few things. Um, first of all, reflect. Think about how you would answer the question when you're in the interview six months, 12 months, two years from now, about what you did during the pandemic. I think companies understand if you didn't have a 10-week internship this year, if you have a gap between college and your first year, companies will understand we are in a unique situation like none of us have ever seen before. They'll understand if you didn't have that 10-week internship. They'll understand if you had the gap. What they won't understand is if you spent the time playing video games or not trying to position yourself for success or not learning a new school, uh, a new skill. So my strong suggestion is really think about what can you do this summer? And even in the school year, when we return to campus, what can you do to best position yourself and make sure you have a great answer to that question? 
also use the time to think about what you're passionate about. To some extent, this summer has provided a pretty unique opportunity for college students in that no longer are you limited to just the single 10-week internship. This summer, you, if you don't have your 10-week internship yet, have the opportunity to create your own experience, to bundle together a series of micro-internships where you're developing and honing and learning about a variety of different industry skills, et cetera. The second thing you should do is act. As Kristen talked about, it's pretty easy to get started on micro-internships. It takes about five minutes. You can see a variety of different opportunities. Sign up and try it. No one will see any of your information unless you proactively apply. And then finally, persist. We are busier than we've ever been before. We're seeing huge increases in the number of micro internships that are available as companies are trying to figure out what is the best strategy for this fall's recruiting. So again, behind the scenes, while all of you have been impacted by COVID in some way, the companies have as well. They're trying to figure out their strategies to get to know you as students for their campus recruiting next year. They're trying to figure out their strategies to drive their recruiting processes and what the future internships look like and how they're gonna identify great candidates if they're not gonna be on campus at career fairs. They are looking to create these opportunities for you, but it's up to you to persist. It's up to you to apply. It's up to you to say, this looks like an interesting opportunity or I never thought about a role in this space, but it looks pretty interesting. Take on that responsibility and that ownership. Again, if you have additional questions, please take a look at the FAQs. We make them available. We have a ton of other great resources on the website. Again, this presentation will be shared after, so you can click through and all of these links will give you access to a ton of resources. And obviously, if you have questions along the way, please feel free to reach out. We're happy to answer. And as we talked about, this is something I founded five years ago, specifically to help improve college to career transitions for all college students and recent grads. This is something everyone at Parker Dewey is passionate about. So if there's things we can do better, if there's ways we can be supportive, if you have suggestions, ideas, whatever, please let us know and we will do our absolute best to try to address them. With that, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, and I know Kristen does as well. And again, have a, have a very uh, productive and safe summer and please let us know what we can do to be most helpful. Thank you.